Too many photos, what do you do now? All right, welcome back to Cheers. Photography After Cheers. Hours. Ugh. We are here today talking about you, you get a new camera or you have a camera and you don't have a plan yet. So you take all these photos and you're looking through them in your Windows or your Mac OS and you're trying to figure out what to do with them all. You have hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe tens of thousands of photos, depending on how click happy you got. And we want to try to help you figure out um, quickly how you can get through the photos, make them work um, for you so that they don't start to own you. So uh, a quick introduction. We want to start over here with Sprague. Um, Susie, Scott, and my name is Nick. We're Photography After Hours crew, and we want to let you know we're sponsored by PAC. PAC runs photo walks, workshops, seminars, all kinds of other education, so check that out on uh, photoadvclub.com. So, Sprague, how are you today, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm outstanding. I'm, I'm excited Haven't to be here. Haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, I know. It's been virtually minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, very um, exciting. So, I, uh, I want to, you know, you had some questions at work of people that are doing photography, maybe amateurs or beginners, and they're, they're maybe using some tools out there that are less than desirable for photographers, um, where there's some tools that are maybe better suited for photographers. So tell us a little bit about your story, how about questions you've been getting. Right. A lot of people are transitioning from iPhones and iPads to DSLRs, and the, uh, they, they've got a much higher quality image. So the tools that they use to process, uh, you know, using the uh, iPhone, uh, just don't really work anymore. They have a lot of very simple processing tools that basically allow you to adjust the exposure, a little bit of color, a little bit of sharpness, and crop it, and then that's it. And pretty much once you get that change and accept it, then the photo's uh, permanently modified. So a lot well, of them, it bakes it in. Right. It, it kind of locks it all in. So I have a lot of those photos in my older stuff. Yeah, that's right. You know, hit the old flush handle. <laughs> get rid of them. So what? Uh, some of them are coming from programs like Picasa, and some of them, uh, like myself, uh, used Aperture for a while, which is no longer supported by Apple, so they want to transition to uh, something different, so they're asking what to use, and my typical recommendation is go to Lightroom because it's got a catalog to organize your photos, and it keeps the uh, pictures referenced in separate files so that they're not contained within the program, and you can let others Sure, yeah. Access the way Lightroom to... works is more of a database um, right. as opposed to... Um, Photoshop, which really, yet at the photo, you're like in one photo and you have bridge that looks at stuff, but that's really more of a image viewer, not a, not a database. You can leverage batch processes to uh, edit multiple files, things like that, it doesn't really... but you're essentially focused on editing one image at a time or pulling pieces from multiple images into one image at a time. And but from it's the a database little bit different. standpoint, there's really no database. You can right. you can look at your stuff, which is on your hard drive with Bridge. It does you, not maintain its own maintain, database. So Correct. you can't like go in there and you have to still go back into your mm -hmm. you know file structure and, and work with that. Right. You can see everything that you've already got. You don't have to tell Photoshop in advance that you have a photo like you do Lightroom. Uh, but Photoshop does not also kind of take on some of your photo file management capabilities or, or functions the way that sure. Lightroom does. So, so when you're transitioning from like a, a point and shoot or an iPad or something like that, and, and you have these tools like Picasa, you have Aperture, um, which um, again, they aren't supporting it anymore. As of this year, they, they dropped the program. Apple is no longer making it and they're not supporting the older versions. So that there was that Aperture Lightroom kind of thing where they were kind of in a, um, a battle for a while, Adobe and Apple, and they kind of just let it go now. Um, you have other ones like ACDC, GIMP, which is a free version. Again, that only works for a PC. Um, what, what is your workflow? So you get home from an event, um, where do your images go? Are you going into Photoshop? Are you going into another program? Or are you going into um, something like Lightroom? I use Lightroom. Use Lightroom? Yeah. So that's it, we're done. <laughs> well, for a long time I used Bridge, and um, and I was I was a hardcore Photoshop proponent. Um, I didn't really see a need to use Photoshop so much because my images were so different across. Like I I wasn't really able to select a range and then do a group edit that type of thing. I needed to edit them individually. 
Uh, but there are enough benefits in Lightroom, and Lightroom has come so far in its capabilities and its robustness and its specificity in terms of the tools that you use from a photo editing standpoint that Lightroom is my go-to right out of the gate now. And then, and I'll do some basic uh, white balancing, things like that. And then I, it, it's cross compatible with Photoshop. So I can hop over to Photoshop, do a few things, come back into Lightroom and finish out my essentially file management steps. Um, and whereas previously I couldn't do that. And, um, and I, I really did dig my heels in for a long time on Photoshop and, uh, and didn't want to go over to Lightroom. So I'm a so, convert. So Scott, when you, um, you know, when you can't, when you come in, why not just use that, that CD that comes with your, with your actual camera and use that? It, it you know, it looks like it has similar sliders and stuff. Do you, do you find that the database of Lightroom suits you better when you're taking large amounts of images of whether it's your kids or it's an event, it doesn't really make a difference. I don't think, but do you, do you find that useful in the aspect of it instead of just going in and using the raw converter? Um, the raw converter, I don't even think I've ever used, to be I honest. Don't think I, I think either. I to have the CD. I didn't even know it was on there until someone else told yeah, me. Yeah, and but I mean, Lightroom pretty much does everything I need. Um, you know, when you're handling thousands of photos, um, it's a great way to catalog, organize, edit, and and get things ready for print. Um, plus, it works seamlessly with Photoshop, which is the other thing that I use, and so. You know, you can seamlessly migrate from from one program into the other and then back to the other. And they just, they work perfectly. And so there's also uh, something to be said for the plugin compatibility. So a lot of people really like using uh, additional plugins and go to certain oh. tools. Um, there's there are some Topaz tools that I think are really, really popular for some folks. Um, On One, for sure, and um, Mac Fun for Mac users. But I don't think they have the intracompatibility with those other apps at all that they do with Lightroom and Photoshop, where they're na they're in they're accessible from within the application. Not only are some of those plugins available or or standalone tools that you can just go into by themselves, but you can access them through a drop-down menu. And I, I could be wrong, but I don't think you can get to them from things like Aperture or... No, no Aperture you can. Can uh, you? But uh, the okay. rest of them, I haven't seen that okay. uh, compatibility. Yeah, and even but, in Elements, yeah. it's hard yeah. to get in and out of Elements, um, which Photoshop... You know, it's a Photoshop mm -hmm. yeah, it's elements. An Adobe. It's yeah. it's there is a way to do it, but it's not cut and dry like um like other like gotcha. other ones. Um, gotcha. I like the um there's one and I'm gonna get this wrong, <laughs> but I think it is in Topaz and it's the a detail um extractor filter that I've used before and I really like it, especially for things like even landscapes that have a lot of structural elements like rocky formations and things like that. And it takes a long time to do that with little fine tweaks and stuff in your regular application, even Lightroom or Photoshop, whereas sometimes a plugin is a quick go-to if, if you know what you're going for. So um, you had mentioned baking the um, settings in there, um, which we call like destructive editing versus non-destructive. Um, what do you find better? because um, a lot of people still want to save those baked images down. Do you have to do that in Lightroom? Well, no, because um, Lightroom is basically making <clears throat> uh, a copy of it. Or it's basically in whatever you're doing is sort of a almost like a, a layer on top of it. And so that's that's basically what's sitting next to it. So when you see it, it just looks like a seamless picture, but your raw file never changes. And this is just all the edits on top of it, which actually is a very small file. And so you never really change it. And the great thing about it is that you can take the original uh, raw file and make what they call a virtual copy of it so that you can perhaps want to try to see what different crops look like and then you can make different edits with different crops or maybe you want one that's sort of an HDR look and maybe you want one that's a black and white look and so you can I'll have lot, yeah. three or four mm -hmm. versions but the uh, the master file the raw file still mm -hmm. exists and so it's, it's really hard helpful space too. right you and, can go back to it a few mm -hmm. versions later as well and re-edit the same photo mm -hmm. uh, without being dependent on the original edits that you made the first round right yeah which is 
So, so event workflow, um, you're our, our staple event guy. So event workflow, so you get home from an event, you shoot a wedding, you put your cards into your computer, and, and where do you go from there? So you, you, you ingest them into Lightroom. Actually, I don't ingest. Um, a lot of people go straight from their card right into Lightroom. I actually copy my cards to my hard drive, and then I do all my backups first, and then I just import into Lightroom okay. off so my working add. drive. So I have a working drive and then I have backup drives. And so the first thing I do is I make copies. So I just copy to my working drive into my backup drive. Mm -hmm. And then I import from my working drive into Lightroom. So you know, when I, when I, I teach Lightroom classes and when I teach them um, on import, there's a box that I make Lightroom do that for me. So I put the cards in. I'll put it in, I'll say make second copy, and then it'll it'll do that for me. So it makes the initial copy on my, my I guess I call it the same thing, working drive. That's the one that goes in this fireproof safe in case there's a fire or a flood or anything. And then the other one um, is behind my computer, and that one gets all the backup images. Now, the downside of that is you're wasting space, but you could format that every year and just, you know, make a copy of that working drive back over to it. Yeah, I keep them. Um, yeah. I, I usually have, I store my files in at least... Uh, two or three different places um, before I, you know, and, and I, I don't, I never delete anything because you never know, you know, just everything gets archived, at least the raw files. So on my working drive um, where I do all my edits, um, you know, that's the good thing I like about Lightroom is that when you do your edits, it creates the sidecars and then you can just archive the sidecars. So, um, it saves a lot of hard drive space that way too. So um, now, from there, um, are you using the functionality? This is what got me into Lightroom way back in the day. Is that um, everyone's telling me, "Oh, use Lightroom One." That was way back when. Now we're on what five, and I'm sure six is around the corner. But um, my draw to it from an event standpoint was I was shooting 10 proms a weekend and shooting thousands of images. I had sometimes several photographers and I'd come home and edit them all one by one in Photoshop and the top of my wrist is destroyed from that. So people are like, no, you can go and select the first one and select the last one and edit them all. Have you done that in batches of photos? I do batch some photos. Um, I'm real careful when I photograph um, an event. And so I know that when I start a series of photographs, um, I will I will either shoot a gray card or shoot sort of some kind of a slate or something like that. So I know that this is the beginning of a new series of photos. So I know that this whole series of photos are going to be edited the same. Okay. They're under the same lighting conditions, same so settings. You're forward thinking, right? And so you forward think it, knowing that I'm going to, you know, for these 30 photos that I take. I can edit one and then apply those settings to the to and the that's next. That's huge. That's right. huge. Even from you know from any standpoint, you can't do that in Photoshop. You can batch certain things, but it's not as easy as click one, click the last yeah. one, edit them all. It's not that simple. So, so you, let's go back to um, beginners, people that just got their cameras. They maybe downloaded Picasa, which is like a free one, or GIMP, or something like that. Um, why would you steer them away from that if they, you know, even if it's for family photos and, and the management aspects of it, so, you know, let's touch on that. Well, when you first uh, get your camera, the, the best thing to do is to have something that you're going to, you know, keep pretty much in perpetuity because if you start out with these uh, programs like Picasa and some of these others, then at some point you're going to want to move them to Lightroom because you're going to get more technically proficient, you're going to like it better, and all of that's going to have to move and that's going to be a horrendous process. So my idea is why not start with the program that virtually every photographer uses, you know, right out of the box, learn how to use it, and then you don't have that process waiting for you when you might have maybe a couple hundred or maybe 10 or 20,000 pictures you have to move that have incompatible formats. Uh, one of the problems with Aperture is that the edits that you make don't survive the move over to Lightroom. All you can really do is convert the edited picture into a JPEG and take it over into Lightroom, but you really can't um, take the edited picture and Aperture, put it in Lightroom, and then use the sliders to make the same changes. So, so modify the edits that you previously made. Right, yeah. The, well, the iPhoto modified. and Aperture and all that kind of keeps everything proprietary the way Apple does, so you right. kind of get your pictures trapped in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. um, and it's the same thing with the plugins. I mean, a lot of the plugins will, once you make your um, changes in the plugin and you take them back to Lightroom, those things get baked into that picture. I mean, it, it's coming back as a copy. So, you know, if you don't like it, you know, you're not stuck with it. But what you, when you bring back, you know, you can't take back and then have all of the um, various edits in, except for the latest version of on one software, which now saves layers and edits for you. So you can go back and, you know, tweak and so a um, couple of things about Lightroom. Um, there, there are cheap versions. You get student editions. It still is boxed. Photoshop is no longer boxed. You have to buy it online only. Um, so the cost is what, like 150 if you pay the full version. So it's pretty affordable. Um, still, ten bucks a month yeah, for Photoshop. Ten, and bucks. ten bucks a month if yeah. you want both of them. If you want to get into that, it's, it's a great deal. Great or you class. can. Or for Creative Cloud, or you can just buy it outright. If you have a student from a kindergartner up through graduate school, and you can prove that, you can get cheaper discounts on both the Creative Cloud and on your boxed version. And the biggest thing of why I sell everyone, and, and they don't, Adobe doesn't pay us anything, why we tell everyone to use it, it is built for photographers. It was built for us. It's the whole play on Darkroom and Lightroom. It's not, it's not like Photoshop was built for designers, so. Well, I put it this way. Photoshop is kind of like the Home Depot of tools for uh, digital editing. So it doesn't have to be photos. It can be uh, computer graphics. It's, it's a variety of things. And Lightroom is optimized for photographers. So Lightroom is the toolkit that's already pre-assembled for photography, um, whereas you can still hop over to Photoshop and get those tools that you need to get into layers and do some complex edits and compositing and things like that. You can go to the Home Depot if you need to, but your toolbox is right there. And it's the same logic that it's the same mathematics that Photoshop is using, just consolidated Cool. Well, you guys make the decision what's right for you. Um, the pros are all using Lightroom at some stage of the game and check it out. Um, we'll put some links in the comments there and you could also uh, put your comments down and tell us we're right or wrong. So see you next time. This was Cheers. After Hours. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.